So here we are again with the restoration of the um, RR radio, tube radio from 1935. And this is the third and last video I'll do about the chassis. I had to split it up in a couple of videos because otherwise it would take way too long before I had uh, put out a new video and also it would be way too much content for one video. So that's why I did the, the chassis in a, in a couple of yeah, pieces. Um, but here we have it back on the workbench um, and it's looking great actually. It had three layers of uh, paint plus um, a layer of primer. Um, and um, I am actually really, really happy with the result. Um, it has been drying here for more than a week now, I think. And um, yeah, it's looking really good. Um, I like the color. Um, I think it was a good choice to go for this military dark green. Um, yeah, very, very happy with it. Now, the next step, obviously, is to put everything back together and install everything back on the on the chassis. But um, first thing we need to do is take off all these um, maskings. See all these pieces of cardboard that I mounted here to cover up the holes and the uh, pieces of paper that I put here to cover up the, the coils. Um, so let me do that and then I'll give you an overview, um, yeah, a better view on how it actually looks like. Okay, and here we have it. All the masking paper and tape and cardboard and everything has been removed um, from both the bottom and the top of the chassis. And now you can more closely see how good it looks. Um, yeah. I am absolutely happy. Oh, I noticed I forgot this small piece here. Um, but okay, I'm really happy with the result. Um, now the next step, obviously, is going to be putting everything back together, um, fastening the tube sockets again, um, putting the cans back on the coils, um, putting the transformer back on. So <laughs> that's going to be still quite a bit of work. Okay, um, all sockets have been mounted back uh, on the chassis. And um, there I also cleaned each of them. Um, I deoxidized all the contacts. I polished all the screws. Um, polished also here the yeah, bases of the shields. Um, and also the contacts of these bases because they have a contact uh, on the bottom side of the chassis which connects them to ground. Um, since yeah, this chassis is painted so um, yeah, it's not a good connection to ground. So the it's actually the screws here that are um, on the bottom side of the chassis connected to ground. Uh, it took me quite a bit of time also because it's quite awkward to put them back in. Um, if you've seen my previous video, then uh, you remember that all these screws, they are uh, attached with nuts uh, on the bottom of the chassis. So they don't just screw in the chassis. Yeah? These are just plain holes everywhere. So they are all... Uh, connected with nuts, um, see, like you see over there. So um, it's not that easy to put everything back. It's a bit awkward, but um, okay, I got it done. And I already start liking how this is going to look. <laughs> okay, um, next step, uh, I think will be the transformer. Okay, um, I made quite a bit of progress. Put the transformer on, um, as you see. Um, I mentioned it in the last video about the chassis as well. I resprayed also the mounting frame here of the transformer. Um, so that's also looking quite nice, both top and bottom. So I put it back. It's not hooked up yet uh, completely. I also um, placed back all the yeah banana sockets here. That was also quite a bit of work to get everything back. And this here switch has also been mounted back. And the uh, plate here with the uh, serial number is also back. That one I gave um, a layer of lacquer, matte lacquer, just to make sure that it doesn't rust again, because that was really rusted badly. And all the screws and everything were also polished, of course. Um, and it's starting to look really nice. <laughs> this is honestly 
I think the, what I like the most about restoration is putting everything back together because you really you really see the result immediately. Um, now the next thing that I'm gonna do is probably put the cans back on here and put the yeah the caps for the tubes back on the on the wires here. Uh, those were also cleaned. Okay, so putting these cans back on. Um, the only thing I need to uh, do here is basically put thread the wire here back through this hole. And if you straighten it out, it should be quite easy. Yeah, see, there it is. And then I need to position the can correctly like that and now the nuts on the bottom i have to say these nuts are driving me nuts because they are often in the most awkward positions and um it's not that easy to get them on yeah, and here they are so close to another screw that uh, it's I cannot use this tool to put them on. So it's just really awkward. Uh, yeah, I, I need to do this off camera. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to do this off camera because uh, this will take you quite a long time and it will be very awkward to do this so yeah let me show you the position of these things um see there is one nut and the other one needs to go there but um see it needs to go on there and it's not easy to get it on at all come on Uh, yeah, okay. And I can attach it um, partially with this tool, but not all the way, which is also inconvenient. See, because this, this nut is in the, uh, sorry, this screw there is in the way. <sighs> so let's see if I can do it with this. Yeah, that should work, but it's also pretty awkward. <laughs> oh, what a awkward thing to put back. Okay, I don't know if you heard me well, but my microphone, I just noticed my microphone fell over, so I'm just saying yeah, this is okay. Ah, yeah, it's it's working. See, I can tighten them. I cannot tighten them too much because they are riveted in the in the can, and I don't want to break the rivet. I think this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's tight. Um, let me do all the other cans. <laughs> See, it's gonna be a bit of work because these holes here are also in all in awkward places. So I'm just gonna listen a bit to them, some music and do this uh, off camera. So before I put back this can, I'm gonna swap out this capacitor here. So um, I will come back to this later in the video where I start working on the electronics, but I'm going to do this now because I'm here and, I'll, and I, once I will close up the can, uh, I don't want to take it off again. All the paper capacitors in this radio are marked in centimeters. So their capacitance is marked in centimeters, not in uh, picofarad. Now, centimeters and picofarad are really close. So you can just consider it as picofarad. I think the conversion is like um a factor of 1.11 or something 
So if you multiply your um, the value in centimeter by 1.11, I believe, then you get the value in picofarad. Um, this is a 1,500 centimeter capacitor. So that means it's about 1.6, bit more than 1.6. So 1,600 picofarad. I've got here a 1,500 picofarad capacitor. It's uh, 0 0.0015 microfarad. That's close enough. Um, and I will replace that one with uh, this guy. So for all intents and purposes, normally uh, you should be able to um, replace the, yeah, just consider centimeter as picofarad um, because all these caps, they have quite a wide tolerance anyway. And the, the difference between um, centimeters and picofarad is well within the tolerance level of the of the capacitor. Um, what is maybe interesting is to measure it and check what we get actually as a uh, as a value out of this. Because yeah, it's a fifteen hundred volt cap, but that's I don't think that's needed here in this application. So I'm gonna replace it with a six hundred and thirty volt cap. Um, I don't think this is really subjected to very high voltages. So let's measure it. And if this one is even bad, then yeah, all of them should definitely be bad. Just trying to be very careful here because we have this coil really close by. Okay, um, let's see what we measure. Um, we measure 2.7 nanofarad, so that's 2700 uh, picofarad. So this one is way out of uh, tolerance and the new one, see it's exactly 1500. So even these caps are bad. Um, so yeah, that figures, all of them should be replaced really. Okay, let's put the new one back. On the bottom, I don't think we have a hole. Anyway, all the wires here in this radio, I already mentioned it before. All the wire, they are, wires, they are just tacked onto each other. There are, ah, there is a hole. There is no physical connection anywhere. They are just tacked in. See, they are all tacked in. I'm going to put this I really need to be careful with this coil and I don't break the small wires of the coil. Okay. Now, Christophe, you need to snap the correct wire here. Okay, right, that's the first capacitor swapped. But um, yeah, there is no, I'm not gonna continue swapping capacitors right now. I'm just doing this because um, yeah, I am in here right now and um, I don't want to take the scan apart again. So just gonna continue now with mounting all the cans and uh, I'll get back to you when it's looking a lot better. Yeah, things are starting to look very good here. Um, it's all coming back together quite nicely. Uh, all the cans are back on. Um, <laughs> that took a bit of time due to the difficult way of, of how to screw them in. I also cleaned the, the wiring here for the top connections of the tubes and I soldered in the... Yeah, I also cleaned up the caps here. They are copper. Uh, well, they didn't look like copper anymore, but I polished those so they are look quite nicely now back uh, as they should. Uh, attached all the wires back to them and I uh, applied some heat shrinking here on every wire because yeah, the original cloth wire, they were all fraying rather badly here at the end or they were just completely gone. Um, so I applied some new black heat shrink. Now it doesn't really look original because I should have used like vintage 
oil impregnated uh, shrink tubing or 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 uh, isolation tubing but okay um this is just what i had laying around and it looks good so i'm happy with that these as well they were a bit more complicated to do because they have this extra wire sticking out which goes to the tuning condenser um so yeah these are done um and honestly they look really good um now the next step will probably be the tuning condenser or i also need to uh, refit the um potentiometers uh, that i removed for the tuning condenser we spoke about this earlier you have these grommets that the tuning condenser is resting on see these guys these are the original ones and they are all yeah completely deteriorated completely cracked and um yeah totally unusable this was actually the one the only one which was um, more or less in the original shape so i could use that one to get measurements now the problem is that this is quite an exotic <laughs> part so it's quite impossible to find an exact replacement what i found was this let me show you these guys um as you see they yeah the uh, the center hole is quite different right um, and also the diameter but the diameter is not that important the most important part is the inner diameter so the diameter of the mounting hole and that one should be okay see i already fitted one over there um, and that one is it's really snug in there so that's good uh, the thickness is it's a bit less thick so i might need to fill it up with a washer or something um but i think it will work these are the pins here that uh, keep the tuning condenser in place so they just go through the feet of the tuning condenser and through the holes in the feet and then they stick through here so i need to need something to fill this up make this a bit thicker or fill this hole up so that they don't wiggle around um, and obviously i need to do that before uh, after putting them through the feet of the tuning condenser um, but I think that'll, that should be fine. So this might work. Let me just give this a try and then, um, we'll see how it ends up. I think we're more or less there in putting everything back together. Um, let me just first clean everything up here a bit. And then I'll also put the tubes in just to get you a better idea of how it will look like. Um, and then I'll give you an overview of what I did and what I still need to do. So there we are. Um, I put in all the tubes just to have an idea of how it would look. And uh, I have to say, <laughs> it looks amazing. I mean, yeah, it looks like new or me maybe even better than you. Um, yeah, really happy with how this turned out. Um, let me explain you what are the things that I did. So, um, first of all, I put back the, the tuning capacitor. Now, I managed to fit to make it fit um, by making the bolts here or the pins that stick through that hold the tuning capacitor in place, making them a bit thicker by wrapping um, self-fusing tape around them. Yeah, I'm, I'm now using self-fusing tape for everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's really a discovery. Um, so by wrapping a bit of self-fusing tape around them, um, and then they became the correct thickness to uh, fill up the holes of the, the grommets here perfectly. Um, so yeah, then on the bottom, I still had to um, um, yeah fill up the, the distance a bit with an extra washer because the new grommets that I have here um, are not that thick as the original ones so I had to add an extra washer on the bottom but that's nice and snug now so that's that's fine then same thing here for the grommet here which is holding the uh, the light bulb or the light bulb socket there I had a grommet with fitted which fitted in the hole but not um, yeah the hole wasn't the inner hole wasn't good enough for the for the lamp socket so what I did is I Put another grommet in there and i glued it in and i well i glued the inner grommet into the outer one and yeah it's holding rather well 
Um, see, the, it's wiggling a bit, but that should be fine. There is no mechanical force on this component anyway. The only thing that I'm not sure about is the heat. I don't know how this grommet um, yeah, will sustain the heat of the, of the bulb. I have no idea. Then here, both filter capacitors. I just put them back. I didn't restuff them yet. And honestly, I also think that I'm not going to restuff them. Um, but we'll talk about that later in the in the video about the power supply. I'm just going to take them out of circuit and put some new capacitors underneath, I think. I'm not going to go through the effort of restuffing them. Um, and I cleaned them up as much as I could. Here on top, it's still not perfect. Let me show you. Yeah, see, here on top, I cleaned as much as I could without uh, removing the, yeah, the print here on top. Um, but it's for me it's enough um, if I would have to if I would go and clean this more then yeah the lettering would be gone I think that's about oh, yeah, I also put back the badge here and obviously I also connected all the wiring for the tuning uh, condenser here on the bottom also on the bottom side of the chassis um, yeah, so I think we are almost done. There are a couple of things I still need to do. I, I also already placed back this uh, potentiometer. This one, I didn't do that one yet because I still need to have grease um, to lubricate the potentiometer on the inside. I don't have that in stock yet. So we'll have a look at that in the video about the power supply, I think. Um, so that one still needs to be put back. Then, what is also an important thing that still needs to be done is the rubber ring here around the, the wheel for the tuning condenser because, see, this is normally the, the shaft that you twist with the button and there is a rubber sitting in between that then also yeah, turns this wheel. Um, wait, let me get the original one. See, this is the original rubber. It is... I think it would still work, but it's cracked and... Uh, it won't feel great and it's also very hard. So we'll have to come up with something there. I think that's more or less it. Ah, yeah, the, the dial here. Let me show you. I don't think I'm gonna go into that on this video, uh, but these are the, the dial. Um, yeah, the pieces of the dial, I cleaned them up as well. I'll show you in another video, I think. Anyway, we'll look at these later because I need to figure out this rubber first before I can uh, put this on. Okay, um, so I've got here a piece of rubber uh, that I normally use to cut out new feet <laughs> or new rubber feet for uh, radios or other equipment. It's a r the right thickness. See, it should fit in here quite well. It's just slightly thicker than the original ring, uh, but it should be fine. Um, now, I measured the diameter, the outer diameter of this um, ring, and it's nine centimeters. And I use the caliper um, to yeah, draw here the outer diameter. Now, I have been thinking a lot uh, lately about how I'm going to cut this. I wasn't even thinking about buying a circular cutter or something. Now, I, I don't know, honestly. Um, I, and I still don't know. Um, I don't have like a laser cutter or a CNC machine or whatever. So I think I'm just going to try and cut it by hand. Um, it's going to take a bit of time because I really need to be really careful and go in multiple passes here. I'm, I don't know if it will work. We will see. And I only got one shot <laughs> because um, yeah, I don't have enough space here on this rubber mat to do it a second time. So that's going to be exciting. <laughs> Um, and that's why I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to here now very carefully see if this works. Okay. Um, after a lot of work and a lot of cursing, um, I've managed to make in the new uh, rubber here. And I already put it on the tuning condenser. And as you see, it's working perfectly fine. Uh, now, indeed, I cut everything by hand. And that was quite a bit of work to get it cut exactly correct um, it was not easy to do at all but yeah it's working see 
I also lubricated the shaft here a bit, so it's moving quite freely. It does have a, a heavy feel uh, due to the resistance of the rubber, but I guess that's the, that's the intention. So, and yeah, you see it's not perfectly uh, round. See, there are some, yeah, <laughs> indentations in the rubber here, let's say, where I wasn't able to cut it 100% correctly. But the thing is, you only need half of the um, circle to be correct, right? Because you're only using this half of the rubber here against the shaft see because that one is just yeah that that piece of the circle is not used of the ring um so yeah this small dent here that i got yeah it's not used so it doesn't really make that much of a difference also the dial isn't sitting in front of this so you won't see it anyway but uh, okay, it works and it's very close to the original. And the only thing that I'm slightly worried about is that the rubber is maybe a bit too soft. And see, if you run past the end point, then I think you might grind away too much of the rubber. But I just have to remind myself to not do that, I think. Um, but that would have also been the case with the original rubber. I guess. So don't go too far beyond the extremes of the dial. Okay, I'm glad that this is really done because that, that rubber that was uh, keeping me awake at night, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, okay, I think that's it so far um, for the chassis. I think I'm gonna leave it at this. Um, I think it looks amazing. And it would, I would love to hear what you think about it. But uh, yeah, I am really, really pleased with, the, with this result. Um, and I think I'm also going to leave it at that for this video. Uh, basically, the only thing that we still have to put back is this uh, potentiometer. And I will do that at a later time when I get it completely fixed. Um, for the rest, I think we are finally ready to start working on the electronics. And um, for all those of you who are sick and tired of just cosmetic restorations here on the channel, um, I have good news because probably in the next video I will start working on the power supply. So then we'll finally get to see some action in terms of uh, the electronics. Um, yeah, so what? where are we? We have the chassis completely done. The speaker is completely done. Um, the cabinet, I basically still have to start on that one. That's also going to be a challenge. And then basically we have everything of the electronics left. Okay, so um, if you are still awake after this video, um, then um, I'd like to thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did because yeah, there is the one thing that I like the most is putting things back together. It's the best part of the restoration. If you see that all your hard work is coming together and you have a nice result like I got here. So uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. And then um, I hope I'll see you in the next video where we'll finally gonna start working and try to get the radio going. So uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.